of these? Well, when I say a minute, I mean, you know, an hour or so. Happy birthday! Okay. Happy celebrate the 50th anniversary of the yoga. <laughs> so just to let you know what's happening this evening, for those who don't know, which is pretty well everybody, uh, we're going to start with just a few select speakers who are going to talk about different aspects or characteristics of the club. I will introduce the speakers briefly and will tell you why they are qualified to speak, if they are. <laughs> Uh, then there will be some other entertainment, including a couple of breaks for recharging glasses and output of refreshment. And um, finally, there will be dancing. If you need to repress, refresh your drink during the... Does somebody want to say something? <laughs> I left my glasses in a campsite in Kootenai, so I can't see you all terribly well. But, um, okay, what I was going to say is, if you need to refresh your glasses, please do so very quietly, and please, if you want to talk to your neighbor, go and do so outside. So, we're going to start with the founding of the club, and then we're going to get a short history from uh, Victor Warren, also known as Lord Tashbrook. He was described in the first Joker's Newsletter as teacher, taxi driver, and layabout. <laughs> His other qualifications to speak include he played for Canada in the Olympics and the pre-Olympic uh, qualifiers. He's been the manager of the Canadian team. He's been president of the CFHA. But his finest hour was co-founding the Jokers. Victor. thing that I was going to say Hooray! at the beginning <laughs> that we want to talk about a big number and then wish Peter happy birthday on this, this day. It's been done, so now. What happened in 1963 and 64? <laughs> shining, I can't see that either somebody's head or the floor. <laughs> Anyway, way back in those days, there were a few of us at university and we decided that when we finished, we wanted to continue playing hockey, we wanted to continue having fun, but there was no real social club in Vancouver. So four of us got together and decided to form our own club, which we did. Now, three of the four of us who did this are here today and I'd like them just very briefly, when I mention the name, and what they did for the club is so they stand up. And first, D.K. Fraser. D.K. invented the name Jokers. So if you want to complain and bitch about it, <laughs> talk to him later. Next, you wonder about the color. Well, we had a very fine player in our little group, Joost Walsack. Now, unfortunately, and you people don't know this probably, he had a bit of a nasty accident this morning. Having played yesterday, he's mad as hell about it. He's pissed off. But he has been put back together and stitched up. But he's home struggling. And he warned me he might not be here. But Joost is significant. You may gather from his name, he's Dutch. The orange came from Joost. And he deserves full credit for us being orange. was very keen that we have ladies in the club, and he was the initial <laughs> member of the Shaker, along with uh, Paul DeLeo's wife, Anna Mick, getting the girls going. Sue Petherbridge Brown hyphen Wilson is going to talk about that uh, a little later on. So, Yost is a big member of this, and finally, there's John Young, sometimes referred to as the late young John. John, can you stand up, please?
John was a highly trained architect and volunteered to design the logo which we all wear today. And five, six years university, he produced this, and I think it's fantastic, and it's still going today. Now, at the time we were formed, the league said we had to play second division and work our way up. Well, that didn't sit well with us. So in a nutshell, we packed a general meeting of the British Columbia and Lower Mainland Brass Hockey League, and when we had enough people to overrule everybody else, <laughs> we voted to have a new, uh, new executive. And five jokers, as they were to be, became five of the eight. And, the <laughs> and how do you suppose we got in the first division? <laughs> now, right after we formed, a problem arose and some of us were away serving our country in a time of great worry. So along came the next wave of players, and Peter Buckton here, P.G. Buckton, the birthday boy, was, had to organize the first team. He'll tell you about it sometime. We also had Nick Milkovich, who is here today, and Nick was the one yesterday who had a logo painted on his cheek. Now I'm told that he had logos on more than one cheek. <laughs> his face is clear, you ask him about the other. <laughs> At the same time, we had Az and Sharon and Sari, who kept us hydrated with 25 cent beer. Where are they? Az and Sharon, can you, thank you very much. There were a couple of others. Vikan uh, showed up and became a member. Kiwi Cameron showed up and became a member. And on it goes from there into all the teams we have now. We never dreamt 50 years ago it would come to this, but it's come to this. Thank you. Victor, I want to give you some idea of what a good administrator Victor is. On one of the tours, I forgot which one it was, he overran the end of the field, crashed into something, and injured himself. When he got back to Vancouver, he accused me of having caused the problem. <laughs> I wasn't even there, I pointed out. <laughs> he said, no, but if you had been, you wouldn't have passed the ball to me. <laughs> Much of the, uh, as you mentioned, that much of the first and only at that time Joker's team was in the Tokyo Olympics, and so the first game uh, was a bit of a schmozzle. But fortunately, we have a historical note from the first newsletter, which is written by the club historian David K. Fraser, who just stood up. He can stay seated this time, David, but go on the underground later. So the historian wrote in 1966, this was, I quote, in October 1964, Jokers fielded its first team. Actually, only five Jokers turned up for the game. Amongst the Jokers playing were Nick Milkovich, D.K. Fraser, Blank, and Blank. <laughs> Fill in the blanks if you were playing. I'd like to have this information for historical record. <laughs> I won, Davy, so I don't know who the other two blanks were. <laughs> Anyway, Davey, uh, realizing at the last minute that we were a bit short of players, uh, persuaded a group of UBC players to come and play for us, and uh, resulted in a tie with the Vancouver A team, who protested the result because there were so few jokers on the team. Uh, protest was upheld, even though jokers had the majority of the executive. <laughs> and then in the second year, we fielded a second men's team known as Jokers 2, T-O-O, and by year five, we had uh, Jokers also, Jokers again, and Jokers encore. <laughs> and we were, despite what may be the appearance, very serious about winning. So from the newsletter in 1971, I'm reading here an excerpt from the captain's report at the time. This is uh, for the previous season, that's the sixth season of the club's history. For the first time this century, the Jokers have won the Senior Men's League in Vancouver. And let me straightway give credit where credit is due. I couldn't have done it without the other 10 men. <laughs> well, probably not. 
<laughs> Asked what their key moments were during the year, team members were suitably modest. Mr. King, Mr. King said something that sounded like, oh, oh. <laughs> all my key moves were ruined because nobody put the ball in the goal. You can say that all my key movements were destined not to bear fruit owing to the incompetence of my colleagues. <laughs> uh, about that time, I know we went, um, I think, nine games out of ten and ended in the uh, top three of the league and won it three times. But by then, the ladies had decided they'd like to play two. And we have a number of jokers, ladies, of course. But one of the uh, old, uh, young, old, one of the ones who's historically significant to the club, <laughs> the, the aforementioned Sue Featherbridge, as she then was. Um, would you like to come to the mic, please, Sue? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is uh, Sue, as you all know now, and I'm here to tell you how we the Jokers Ladies first began. Tired of only being the cheerleaders and social attributes to the Jokers men, we were delighted to be invited to play in the first mixed hockey tournament in September 1967. This was played at Hillcrest Park, and I know quite a few are here today, which is brilliant. Um, and we had over 100 participants. It was a tremendous success, including the party held that evening at when, where else, the ENC, Elephant and Castle. Uh, fired by our enjoyment and realising that once again we could play hockey after a long gap from our school days, we applied to the Jokers Committee to form a team and uh, become members. Um, it seems that there were a few doubting Thomases <laughs> who feared that allowing women into the club might spoil things. We women were not going to allow this and we made such threats to the, to the men that they saw the error of their ways. <laughs> Eventually we were accepted. Anamika Delo uh, became our first team captain. Victor, after much persuasion, became our team coach. And he was followed shortly by Neil Hurd. <laughs> we, we soon immersed ourselves into the club, uh, playing our weekly matches home and away um, at Hillcrest when we were home, and providing we provided one of the popular venues for beer sessions at Heather Street. Uh, and, and at Heather Street we had our on-site French chef, Pierre, who would provide French onion soup to go with the beer. Uh, many of you will probably remember this. Uh, we also infiltrated the committee, actually got in there, uh, providing a social secretary and later men filling many other posts. Our hockey uh, results were varied. Uh, well organized and young um, teams thrashed us, no doubt about it. Uh, but we had some successes. We won the semi-final one Saturday of our division, um, but we failed miserably the next day. Guess why? <laughs> we celebrated so much that night at the party, at Joker's party, we could hardly move the next day. Um, we followed the orange trend with short orange skirts, and uh, one of our members here actually has her original skirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I recently came across an article in the uh, magazine, um, in, and it, it was in the uh, Jokerettes news. We did, we did actually get and have a little section in the news. And I'll quote to you. Maybe the fashion houses throughout the world 
promote the Midi, but the Jokerettes, as rebellious as ever, continued with the Mini trend and a shearing off yet another inch for 1971, <laughs> showing more leg than ever. So that so if they land up in hospital with frozen frillies, long live women's live. <laughs> of the Jokers women's teams over the years is quite amazing and you will hear a lot more about that later on. Uh, we in 1967 started it and many of us are very proud to still be members or attached to members. Uh, I have... <laughs> <laughs> um, I have since um, spent some time, as you know, in the UK backwards and forwards and can honestly say that nothing compares to being a member of the Jokers. I've joined clubs there and they, nobody has the fun that we have. So may I just say, long may the success continue. interested to know that Sue isn't as old as she thinks she is because when we went to the Southeast Asia tour which Sue came with us we left here on March the 2nd you fly through the night cross the date line you arrive there March the 4th Sue's birthday is March the 3rd <laughs> so she's a year behind where she thinks she is now, as for the social life of the club, you've heard about the contribution of Az and Sharon, which was major. And um, since then, there have been few people who are as much socialite as jokers as uh, Christine Byrne. Is she here? <laughs> October 11th to the 13th, and they want one men's, one women's team, and they're going to have them, one man and their women, and the Portland women. Um, so if you're interested in uh, coming to that, please let me know later. That's it. That's the announcement. Okay. Set the tone. Um, <laughs> I started coming to the club in 1982 when I was two. Um, <laughs> I was, I was a girlfriend of a guy uh, who started playing hockey, and um, so I used to come to the games, and, and I was at the club all the time, just because, you know, I was supporting him. Um, not because of the beer or anything. Um, but because I was here all the time, girls like Jennifer Pearson, who you may remember, um, and Josie Truen, um, kept asking me to play. Well, I thought I was just being nice. <laughs> but actually, they were serious. But I think really they were just desperate. <laughs> because back then we had five men's teams and only two women's teams. So I think they were just trying to beef out the numbers no matter what. Now, I mean, today we have the opposite. We have five women's teams and two men's teams. So, guys, we need to be found. I think it's too late for this season, but next year. Um, so in 1984, I started playing hockey. Or 
I was on the on the field anyway with a stick in my hand. <laughs> I used to play netball, you know, and I was actually quite good. Yeah. But I never played field hockey, so it's a very, very different sport, you know. In netball they make you tape down your fingernails so you're not such a you know. Um but anyway, um without any training I went on and I mean we often would just get rained out. We played on grass then and when it rained you couldn't play because you would ruin the mud. So you know um it, it was it wasn't easy but it was so much fun. The greatest part of being a joker though is that they live up to their name on and off the pitch. And I can't believe, I mean, there are some photos here that I sent to Tim that are intermingled there um, from what we used to do. <laughs> and I remember um, a lamb roast spit at Hyvis's backyard many years ago. And he ran around beautifully with squirting this mint sauce all over it. So it was beautiful and tasty and tender. But he was a little slow on the uptake of when he put the bloody thing on. So by midnight, we were eating rubbery lamb. But you know, when you're pissed, you don't really notice. <laughs> I vaguely remember Graham in the kitchen <laughs> playing cricket <laughs> with an empty beer can. <laughs> um, then there were the lavish Beaujolais Nouveau parties by Mr. David Clark. They were very fancy affairs. He spared no expense. Honestly, he was one of the most generous. Um, gourmet food. Not like, you know, the uh, sour cream and onion soup dip. <laughs> Shit. That we seem to get at most of our parties now. Anyway. <laughs> and then there was Lauren Carnes with his uh, homp and my homp, <laughs> which was the house of many people and the new house of many people, uh, where there were many new years spent and some couplings occurred. Um, of course, the, the, the most outrageous of all these parties was David Laird's Bear As You Dare, which was literally Bear As You Dare. And uh, the first year, I think it was, um, we had this men's team from Singapore who were playing at Orca, and they turned up in their, you know, the zoot suits, you know, with the thin tie and the nice suit and all that. And you should have seen the looks on their faces <laughs> when Barry Lawton walks in with Pecan's girlfriend on his arm, and that's it. <laughs> yes, yes, not a buckets. <laughs> but he had a lot to be proud of. <laughs> Graham, that boyfriend was talking about, um, he made his costume out of ivy from his backyard and he got some elastic bands and somehow held together, it was amazing. But he got so face, he fell into the bushes and nobody noticed. <laughs> For a long time, all night, maybe. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure a few guys pissed on him and he didn't notice. <laughs> um, Golden Oldies is another tradition that we have with the Jokers, and, you know, and we excel at it, especially because Victor designs these outrageous costumes, and we win. Pretty much every year, the uniforms are the winners at these things, and I mean, they're, they're absolutely fantastic. My first Golden Oldies was, uh, my, my overseas Golden Oldies, my first Golden Oldies was actually the one in Vancouver. I didn't play <laughs> for Vancouver, because I had just got back from Australia the year before, and I didn't have any jobs, I couldn't commit, blah, blah, blah. So I played for the Calgary Cowgirls. And our uniform was this lovely tartan gray and yellow, I think it was, but it had Velcro that held it together. And so when we scored a goal, it was, yeah! <laughs> we only scored <laughs> Yeah, but we did rest in the beer gun. <laughs> we scored lots. <laughs> um, anyway, my first overseas gold oldies was in Adelaide, in Australia. Because, you know, two to one sale, I can go home, visit family, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, 
And they have a template, you know, there's the opening ceremonies and there's the Monday, Wednesday, Friday games, you know, that, you have to do that shit, you know. But the Tuesday was the picnic day and the, the picnic day went to Wolf Blast wineries, which, oh my God, fancy schmancy. We walked into this hall that's huge and so well decorated, 900 people just crammed in and every table had buckets of wine and beer and red wine out of the bucket. And it never ended. Every time something went out, it was a new one came in. It was like this miracle of never ending bucket. And we started at 11 a.m. though. So, yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. My usual self. Anyway, so we were, we were partying and dancing to the Rolling Bones, I think they called them. It was the Rolling Stones and Knock Off, they were so good. It was so much fun. Anyway, we're on the bus back to Adelaide, and I'm on the bus in my usual state. I piped up and went, party our room, you know? I thought this was a great idea. Uh, my poor roomie was very dismayed. However, Vic was a gracious host, as always. <laughs> and then she cleaned up. Next morning I wake up and all the beer bottles are lined up, all the wine bottles are, she's just amazing. Anyway. We decided to go out uh, later at that night to get something to eat because Christine was a little bit pissed. And so we had to cross the road, and, but we only got halfway because the lights changed. And so there we were standing on the median, and all of a sudden, the ground just jumped up and kissed me. <laughs> you know, and there I am. <laughs> and then um, the traffic was just about to come. And this knight in white knight in shining armor reaches down, grabs my hand, drags me up like a rag doll, and saved my life. Thank you, Phil Hack. Where are you, Phil Hack? <laughs> I'm here, I'm Phil Hack. Um, but the next morning I woke up, I had no memory of this at first, until my shoulder was like, what the f? I get dislocated shoulder? Where the hell did this come from? Anyway, it all started coming back. Ooh. Anyway, this is my last story about... Anyway, um, one of the greatest traditions that Jokers have had has been going to Hesperia and Cougar Annie's garden. And some of you have been there, and you know what I mean? But some of you haven't. Um, it's Pecan shares this beautiful home of his in the wilderness. You have to get up really early on a whatever, Friday, and then catch the, the world, the cars to the ferry, then the ferry to Nanaimo, and then drive from Nanaimo up to Tofino, and then get in a water taxi for an hour and a half, two hours, and you know, it's very wilderness, but beautiful, just amazing. And he's ecologically saved the place. He has these boardwalks to prevent us from walking on the forest floor, he built these gorgeous cabins with an individual outhouse for everyone. <laughs> and this is what you do, right? You've got this bag of um, cedar chips. So you do your thing in the hole, the long drop. <laughs> you take the toilet paper, you wipe your ass, you put it in a brown paper bag. Then there's another bag of cedar chips, which you throw down the hole, so that the bears don't get attracted. Well, after the 50 million beers you have, you're wiping your ass with cedar chips. <laughs> That's why. Anyway. One of my most memorable Hesperian uh, experiences, other than the one where I um, you know, broke my rib falling into Al Boyson's crutch. Um, that's another story, we're talking about time about that one. Um, was when I, I, I went, uh, and this is when we were still tenting. This was before we made the cabins and we were tenting on the beach. Anyway, I was showing a tent with Maureen and it rained that night. And oh, I love that line in the tent, here in the rain is, is pretty. Anyway, uh oh, ding, 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 ding. In the morning, oh, the August was played. Um, I woke up and I went outside. And there's this guy lying in a sleeping bag, using a log as a pillow, in this Mount Everest thing. Obviously, you know, he's warm and cozy. And it was Stuart Wilson. And this was the first time I'd ever met Stuart Wilson. I'd heard about this guy, 
but apparently it was something to do with raising kids or something. Anyway, so we didn't see him for a number of years, and I, I met him in this day. Um, so I know you know it's the 50th anniversary of the Jokers today, but it's the 40th anniversary of the Jokers in the BRC. And Stuart, with the help of Tim Shattuck from the rugby section, are responsible for bringing the Jokers into, into the rowing club. And that's why we have this beautiful facility here. And there's a number of us, which we call the usual suspects, me and Val, uh, on Thursday nights. <laughs> Uh, we come in here regularly because Thursday used to be our practice night when we play grass. And, I mean, you're all welcome to come down. But Stuart has done so much organizing for this club uh, to do with teams, to do with um, uh, golden oldies, to do with international stuff. But you have to understand he's the man, or the perpetrator, or should I say innovator, who introduced or got the field hockey, whatever you call them, to introduce AstroTurf to field hockey. And it, instead of grass hockey, we became field hockey. And that was at the Montreal Olympics. And so I can blame him, okay? Anyway, I just want, I want to acknowledge Stuart as being one of the... The reason, the reason here in this place. And, and I have a little something for you, and it's, it's really quite grotesque, but Stuart, where are you? Come here, come here. The free stuff for a It's a bit of a joke, but it's for you. He's the joke and eater. The joke People have a different perspective, perspective on what three and a half minutes. <laughs> However, um, it struck me that combining the last two themes of the ladies joining the club and the social life, uh, it's not surprising there have been a number of romances. So, if you have, if you are a joker who married another joker, would you please stand up? Is uh, which two jokers, which yeah, which two jokers lived together the longest before they were married? That's, that's probably right. But uh, the last time we asked, the, the winner was Tim King and Ian Roxburgh. found a bride when he was on tour <laughs> and brought her home. There you go. Gosh, they're all painting. <laughs> no wonder so, tours are so popular. <laughs> right. um, okay. Of course, the trouble is, though, when you do get married, as we found earlier, is that as more of us entered that holy estate, um, the more wives there were who were not keen to tolerate the crowd of muddy people in, in bunny boots stomping around their houses at the beer sessions after the game. Um, that was a problem actually for a while and so in the end though we were led out of the wilderness as Christine told us uh, of this logical plastic by the Pied Piper of the Jokers, Stuart Wilson, who will tell you how we joined the growing club. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Christine, for doing my speech. <laughs> well, that's a tough act to follow, actually. You're and not the only one. I can tell one, three to one and a half, Peter. 
And also, just a minor correction about me being responsible for AstroTurf. I mean, we were, I was one of five jokers that uh, and John McBride, uh, who uh, did a bit of work in that, but it certainly wasn't me. I was just a, 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 a minor player. Anyway, enough of that. I'm Stuart Wilson, as you know. I was president of the Jokers in 1974, when we had no clubhouse and were operating out of members' basements for meetings and beer sessions. It's my pleasure to spend a few minutes describing how we joined the rowing club that year. As you know, in addition to our 50th anniversary of the Jokers, this is also a celebration of 40 years here. As you've heard before, and already from Christine, the story was Victor Warren ran into Tim Shattuck of, of the rugby section in the Abbotsford pub. Tim raised the possibility of joining the rowing club as a field hockey section, and as was his want, Victor passed the question on to me for the Jokers to consider. We had a series of meetings and some Jokers meetings, this is, and some fairly lively debates about the pros and cons before finally reaching an agreement to join. We were first accepted as rugby members, which was necessary until the next BRC AGM could be held when the field hockey section was created. What was not fully appreciated at the time was the situation that the rowing club was going through with the yachting section, then known as the Broad Yacht Club, which was basically trying to take control of the club and set their own moorage rates. The other sections were of course strongly opposed to this and needed to increase their membership to try to outvote the others. Soon after we joined, and when I became the first hockey board member, I learned just how nasty the, the dispute had become. The Yachties had stopped paying mortgage, the club had no revenue, and was basically shut down, with no staff and many safety concerns being told by the uh, fire department. This dragged on for months, with endless meetings and legal arguments, and was finally settled in our favour in the BC Supreme Court, and the Bride Rock Club was sent packing. Since that rather dramatic start, the Jokers hockey section has become an integral part of the rowing club. We've had the privilege and pleasure of having this wonderful clubhouse with this incredible location, second to none in the world. We've had numerous legendary parties and social events, and the opportunity to show it off to many overseas clubs and other visitors touring Vancouver. Last night's event on the deck, for those of you who were here last night, uh, on the deck and the, on that magnificent evening with the full moon coming up, was just the latest example of what a special place this is. Yeah, yeah. It's also of interest that the Ryan Club has always allowed us to retain the use of our own original Joker's name and colour, orange colour, something that worried me early on, given the fact that the Bride Bar Yacht Club, with their own name, that fiasco that we've just been through. But I think, and I do thank the Ryan Club for understanding all that, and uh, I think we've proved to the club that we are Strongly, we strongly support this place and are very proud of our membership here. I'd also like those of you who have not kept up your membership here after stopping playing to consider rejoining as social members. At a cost of about $260 per year, it's the best deal and location in town for social events, running or walking, gym workouts, meeting old friends, and perhaps a chance to give back something to the Jokers and the rowing club. It would give you a, the contact and encouragement to perhaps help with coaching, committee work, encouraging younger people to, and new arrivals to join. You are a great resource. Oops, wrong page. <laughs> great potential resource. And the hockey section of the club needs your support to make the next 50 years even more successful. I'd like to finish by recognizing well, it was to be three gentlemen, but I'll, I'll name them all, but only two could make it tonight. Uh, from the rugby section, who are our honored guests tonight. So, would Tim Shattuck and Bob Flood please stand up? Yeah. The, the, the third guy was Dave Sollings, and the three of them I got to know very well through those early years, and. Uh, they, they've been an extraordinary example of what uh, people can do, what, what, they, what, contributes, what contributions they can make to a club. And uh, we could use a few more like you. Um, so, so I'd like to acknowledge their help and ask you all to show, oh, you've done that. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much.
So, uh, trivia question. <laughs> Which was the first Canadian hockey club to tour to other parts of the world? Joker's Joker. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we were second, but we've done far more touring than all the other clubs put together. <laughs> and to tell you how this started, we have our famous in-house artist, who was actually on the first five Joker's tours, to tell us about it. The main purpose of Jokers International was to have some wonderful holidays, play some hockey, who are you? Who are you? and travel in a group. Who are you? I'm Ian Roxburgh. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> we were venturesome, avoided countries where hockey was strong. Started planning, <laughs> started planning for each tour a year ahead, each three years apart. By the fourth tour, we had been to 19 countries. We were the first ever foreign team to visit Cuba, Bogota in Colombia, Bandung in Indonesia, and Taiwan. Could have been Mexico as well. We'd arrived a few months earlier. <laughs> Fun time in Cuba. Game started one and a half hours late. Their team went to the wrong field. <laughs> Flag bearing procession round the arena. Long grass. Strange interpretation of the rules. Accommodation in the ex Hilton Hotel. Ex every toilet seat in the building. <laughs> In Taiwan, no hockey players were visible. <laughs> On arrival, we were told that all the fields were in the south and currently underwater. <laughs> we had a fine banquet with smartly dressed businessmen. <laughs> so travel was big for us. On our Six Nation South American tour, Peru was a stretch, one game in Lima, but 1,300 kilometers of unintended car travel. <laughs> Uh, Christmas Day, Southwood flight was cancelled, and then for the next section, we found the trains were on strike. We, we got to see and wander around Machu Picchu completely deserted. Daily visits now are 2,500. We were so lucky in the earliest years. Tourism was cheap and uncrowded. Our Asian tour was from early 1973. Gasoline was 14 cents a liter, 53 cents in today's money. We got group discounts of nearly 50% on airfares and first class hotels. So much fun we had and crazy exploits we had as on every tour in <coughs> Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, Malacca, Singapore, Jakarta, and Bandung. And finally, five days rest in Bali on deserted, now famous Kuta Beach. In countries where we played the locals role and with the uh, European style clubs, we would generally assume to be the best representative team of our city or province. Finally, <laughs> in Bandung, in the hill country of central Java, Indonesia, there it was in big red letters on white, Welcome Team Canada. <laughs> the stands were packed. <laughs> with about 10 adults and 40 wildly cheering children. 